What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy MM2K back again with another one. All right, so I want to do something a little different um, because, you know, we got a lot of people that want to follow this moniker, right? That uh, MM2K don't play no games, right? <laughs> and I love it. I find it funny. It's just it's just the ways of the idiot uh, herd, as I like to call it, because they, um, they don't do their due diligence. And they love regurgitating the same old stupid notions I, I, I often say they all you know get high at the same trap house sharing the same needles they all suffer from hepatitis c mentally you gotta be with that being said on to a lighter note with that being said um for those of you that are rooted in reality i wanted to bring more of my gaming experience that i don't put out there on front street but i want to put more of my gaming experiences out there and put you more into thinking of where is MM2K coming from with these ideas and notions? Why is he so critically hard on certain games? Why does he favor other games? Um, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, before doing all this stuff on YouTube, I had, as a hobby, it was nothing serious. As a hobby, I had worked with a group of other fellow gamers in the community, um, and we had a publication, very small, very short-lived publication called The New Age Faction, right? And the New Age Faction um, was all about hardcore gaming, um, hardcore game analysis, and innovation in gaming, right? So, to, to try to put this in perspective, I don't. a lot of you guys may not be old enough to remember this, uh, but GMR was a magazine that was associated to... EB Games. Now, for those of you that don't know what EB Games or GMR is, EB Games was GameStop. They were a separate entity. They were just like a GameStop. The GameStop came about and then they bought out EB Games. And when EB Games was out, they had their own magazine, like how GameStop had Game Inf has Game Informer. EB Games had GMR. When they bought out EB Games, which is GameStop, GMR was dissolved. Right. And I was ashamed of many in the hardcore gaming community because GMR was known to be tough. They were known to, to force um, the hand of developers as far as innovation was concerned. And losing such a prominent critical voice like that, I think does hurt gaming. You know what I'm saying? So what we were trying to do is we were trying to pick up that mantle, continue that mantra, and roll on. Um, and we were short-lived and we didn't make, <laughs> we didn't go too far. But with that being said, it was all fun, you know. At the end of the day, but I want I personally wanted to carry on that mantra. So what I do is when I evaluate a game and while I'm playing it, this may sound over the top, it may sound silly, but I, I want to have a, 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 a reflection of what my thoughts were of the uh, uh, at the time when I was playing the game. So I actually create like a diary. I know it sounds a little spooky and suspect, but just hear your boy out. I create, I call it a diary because I'm keeping a journal. Maybe journal's a better word for grown man. <laughs> I keep a journal of how I felt, you know, how long I played the game, weigh that against everything, and then I come out with my score or my analysis of the game, right? And so to get to, to, to help you guys understand where I'm coming from, let me just give you a peer into that, right? So this is, and, I, and I've, and honestly, I've robbed this whole format from, uh, uh, what do you call it? I robbed this whole format from New Age Faction. Someone at New Age Fact Faction created this whole format, this excellent formula, and I just want to go over it real quick. So we base games off of four major criteria. And those four major criteria are visual implementation, product placement, game depth, and game mechanics. Visual implementation is graphics and physics. Product placement is the main genre the game focus introduced to gamers. Did it did the game meet, fall short, or exceed this goal? We feel game we felt that game placement was important so people know what they were getting into. Um at, at least at the at the base level. Game depth. That that includes level design, game length, replay factor, and broad appeal, and then lastly game mechanics, controls, movement, stiff. Uh, to lose just right basic instructions and necessary tutorials do, do I know what the hell I'm doing here and did you give me the adequate tools to do so and lastly bugs you know and some of what we said is that we've done 
What we've done is break our overall system in four groups. Each has subcategories in which we will heavily scrutinize games. Yes, we say scrutinize. So those were just some uh, notes from what we had. Now, how does this all apply to what I'm talking about right now on Borderlands 3? Well, I just want to show you. Um, you look here. Okay, now, 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 don't judge me. Just follow me here. Actually, yeah, this is, this is the formula. All right, and what it does is it calculates... You, 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 you plug in how much time you've played, you know what I'm saying? You just keep like little notes here, but you plug in how much time you played and what, you, what your scores and what your thoughts are on each individual pillar, and it comes up with an average score. And the, the genius and the beauty of this is that depending upon your hours and that score, it takes that all into consideration and gives you a current score at the time. So let's say, for instance, if I put 100 hours in the game, all right, at 75 hours of that 100, I thought that the game was fantastic. I gave it a 9. But for some reason, those last two and a half hours, eh, I, you know, I wasn't so great about the game. I gave it a 7.5. Well, it doesn't just take those two scores and average them together. It takes everything into account. It properly averages the amount of time that you played with the game with what you gave it at that time, and it comes out with a more accurate formula. So, if you look at it here, I have that my hours broken down. I know MM2K plays no games, but and this is just one game of many that I've been playing, right? But uh, with Borderlands, I, my first time around, I combined the entire 31 hours that I played the game, um, and I was I gave it like an 8.725 after everything was averaged together. Um, because all, all I do is put my time in, put in some notes, give my average score and why on each individual section, and the spreadsheet does the rest. The sec my second playthrough, I did it for two hours. Um, my final playthrough, which was uh, a couple days ago from the time of this recording, I did it for four and a half hours. That's when I played with Noah and Chosen. And, um, oh, I forgot the other guy's name. I'm sorry. But, um that time frame, uh, I gave it an 8.9, which was higher than the other two times, but if you can see, it's it, because 31 hours of my time so far with the game, I gave it 8.725, that's gonna weigh heavier than my other scores, right? So it averages everything correctly, and right now, the way I've, uh, uh, as, far, as far as this spreadsheet assessing what I put in, I, I'm giving the game like an 8.74 so far. I'm really enjoying the game. Um, the mechanics are great. Just some of the notes that I have here as far as positives. Gameplay was appealing. Um, it's more like Borderlands 1 than 2. Um, it's uh, The gameplay is good, um, but some of the negatives are... Uh, uh, oh, another positive first, let me, before I get to the negatives. More game depth, level design really opened up, challenge has increased, um, but however, when we get to the negatives, uh, you know what I'm saying? Not a lot of new game depth at first within that 31. So that first 31 hours, it was fun, but it wasn't like innovative. Now that I'm getting into it, it's, it's picking up the pace a little bit. Another negative is not a lot of new mechanics shown again at first within those first 33 hours. Within the last four and a half hours, though, it picked up a little bit. Um, however, another negative is scaling when doing missions are, are still bad, meaning that I'm, I'm kind of being dinged for doing side missions which is bad. Like if I get a mission and I pick up a mission at level 10 and then I say, okay, let me do a couple of side missions first. Let's just say I go up a couple of levels and do those side missions. I go back to that level 10 mission. All my loot is still at level 10. That's a problem because normally you do the side missions in between doing the main missions. And that wasn't a problem with the previous games. The level would scale, I mean, the loot would scale up like in the burrows and stuff like that. Maybe when you killed enemies, if the enemy was a level five, the loot was a level five that popped from the enemies, but the le but the loot that was in the chest that you got stayed within a reasonable realm and they're not doing that this time. So that's a problem that hopefully they can fix with a patch. But with that overall, still an 8.74, um, very, very good game, very good game in my eyes. Uh, I'm continue to do this. I'm gonna do this once a week to keep you guys abreast of where I'm coming from with this. But with that said, that's a pair into how I break and departmentalize, decompartmentalize the games that I play. I hope you guys like a lot of this uh, <laughs> nerd analysis and all other stuff, and you found it valuable. Just to give you a, a, a you know look into uh, how MM2K again reviews his games. With that said, I want to thank everybody for coming. Enjoy your gaming days. No, 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 no. You know how the saying goes. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.